Okay, what I'd like to explain is uh, how do you how you take a mere depiction and turn it into a actual work of art. And if you can use your imagination and visualize this elk without anything else around it, um, it would be just a mere depiction. It would just be an elk. Nothing special. There's been hundreds of elk sculpted and painted and and uh, there would be nothing special about it. But when I add the tree, this burnt out stump in, it starts giving it some atmosphere, um, a place, um, a, a moment in time, and it starts stirring the imagination to what this elk could actually be doing. The title of this piece is The Scent of a Woman. And uh, the elk is just, uh, this bull elk has walked up on a little ridge and he's sniffing the air in search of a, of a mate or a harem. <clears throat> then I start adding in um, shrubbery here. And it's nothing special either, but it's a line. And it's a mirroring image of this let me turn it, of this line here, this would be about center point, and this is a mirroring image here. So what that does is act as a funnel to pull your eye into the piece. I like to use mirroring shapes and mirroring lines. This little root system is a mirrored image of the underbelly. Uh, the whole base actually is a mirrored image of the top line. And what this does, even the angles of the base will pull you into this leg, bring you back up, and kind of figure eight you back through the piece. <coughs> Excuse me. This is another interesting aspect. <clears throat> you want the opposite side of the main focal point to be as interesting. So what I've done here is I've created a line that actually mirrors the top line of the, of the animal. And these roots will bring you back in. Again, this negative space is mirroring this negative space. <clears throat> the contour of the tree uh, gives it a spiral effect. When I turn it this direction, here again, this is the mirroring image. It's also captured here in the blog. This reflects the, the head, angle of the head and the nose. This shape here brings you back up into the piece. The, the stump actually serves to keep the eye in the piece. Where the antlers are coming down, it picks up, brings you back in, or vice versa. Um, so nothing has taken you away from the piece that's drawn you in. Uh, everything has been pretty well thought out as far as, as what makes this piece work. And without these uh, principles, the piece would just be a, a, just a common help depiction. Uh, even the the way that the leg is, let me turn it around here, the legs on this angle, you know, we're creating somewhat of a pyramid. This gives stability to the base and balance to the piece. Also with this, with this edge and this edge is balance with this point reflecting the center of the, the piece from the head to the front of the base. Um, there's also this, this line is a mirroring line of this line. This negative space here is complementary to the actual shape of the, the overall shape of the piece. Uh, there's a, a beautiful negative 
diamond shape in here. Is that uh, all these things are just um, it just makes the piece interesting. The way the horn, the antler comes up and hooks into the tree, the tree pulls you back into the piece down. Um, there's uh, reflected images of the line of this stump to the neck and when you turn it it mirrors it on the other side of the neck either way um, I hope you can see that uh, it's also a center point and a, a balance point for uh, a vertical line even this little uh, stump right here, or branch I should say, has a, a purpose of pulling the eye back up into the piece. And when, the, when it's viewed directly on, it catches this line here. It's like connecting the dots, so you want to connect the dots and lead the eye all over, all around the piece. Um, a true master sculptor or painter controls the viewer uh, by these different uh, aspects and principles of art, and and that's what we do. We want we want the viewer to uh, look all over the piece. Everything's got to be interesting, uh, even this area right here, more of a negative space, is has a reason. It's a pyramid shape in here to direct the eye up. It pulls it right up this leg, right into the eye of the animal. So anyway, those are just a few little uh, uh, pointers that, uh, that I try to uh, work into each each piece of art that I create uh, starting with my main subject matter and then everything else is complementary. I don't get carried away with a lot of detail in the base um, uh, because those shapes and forms are all uh, strictly complementary. No artist uh, wants anyone to walk up to their piece and go, oh look at all that beautiful detail before they see the the entire piece. So you want the you want the whole piece to tell the story.